Hello, I'm Jia Guanshu. Today's talk is a result of Tim's work, and I am the speaker for today's sharing. In this talk, I want to share some best ideas about image denoising. I will have a quick overview for image denoising and introduce some techniques and their Python code implementation behind it. And finally, I will share how to apply image denoising to real-world applications. So, let's have a quick overview for our topic. The goal of image, image denoising is to recover a high-quality image from its noisy or degraded version. It's one of the fundamental problems in the domain of image processing and computer vision. As you see in the slide, the quality of the blur image becomes much better after image denoising. There are many softwares and services that provide the functions for image denoising, and most of them use modern AI to solve the problems. In the past, some traditional methods were used for image denoising, like non-local mean or wave -like transform. The limitations of these methods are that they are assumed the noise is some kind of, of statistical distribution, like Gaussian or Poisson distribution. They use some robust algorithms to remove such noises. To overcome the limitation of traditional methods, we can try to use deep learning methods, the techniques behind today's modern AI. Deep learning is a powerful tool for computer vision. It can learn the image, piece, the image features and noise properties from a lot of data. So it's possible to break the barriers of the noise distribution assumptions. Deep learning methods can handle, handle different kinds of noises. And there are also two main model designs. Today, we want to focus on additive white noise images and residual networks. We can simulate various kinds of noises and to make the noise image quality worse, and then use the data to train the deep learning models. The most simple way is to randomly generate some noises and add them to the original clean images. The noises here can be real-world noises and not necessary to be statistical. The next session, we will introduce some famous deep learning models for image noise. One kind of the main design is autoencoder. An autoencoder model is a deep learning model concept that takes a noise image as input and tries to recover the original clean image. There are two components inside an autoencoder model, encoder and decoder. The encoder tries to find some meaningful information from the input image to be the middle code. And the decoder use, them, use the middle code to recover the image. UNET is a special form of an autoencoder. Its original usage is for image segmentation. Let's try to find the detailed shapes of objects in an image. We can directly use UNET to recover a clean image from noises images. UNET works because it works because it passes the communications between the encoder and decoder by the direct connections, as you see in the slide. It solves the problem of the bottleneck. We call bottleneck bottleneck problem of previous autoencoder models. 
The other kind of the main design is residual network. The idea of res residual network is, is from a very famous deep learning model called ResNet. The design can make models very deep by using identity mapping and residual mapping. And one classical example that uses residual network for image denoising is DNCNN. The model design of DNCNN is similar to other models for computer vision that uses convolution layers. The most obvious difference to UNET is its output. The output of DNCNN is not the clean image, but the noises. The output noises will be combined with the noise image to get the final image. The concept of DNCNN is much as the same as residual network. Here we show a simple comparison between UNET and DNCNN from our experience. One issue is the training data. In most cases, you need a pair of clean and noise images to train the AI models. If the image pairs are misaligned, which means they are taken from different shots of a camera, you name may outperform DSNRM in such scenarios because it doesn't assume the pixel-to-pixel -pixel alignment in each image pair. The drawback of UNET is its output images are easier to be blurred because it needs to recover the whole image, whole clean images. DNCN can easily handle such problems because it only needs to output the noises, not the clean images. We will focus on the DNCN because its denoising capability is much better than UNET in general. And the misaligned mis mis problem can be solved by other techniques. So now, let's try to implement the DNCNN model using Python. We will introduce the most basic and mo the most important parts for DNCNN implementation. The demo code is based on an open source project that uses PyTorch. PyTorch is one of the most famous deep learning models frameworks. By using PyTorch, you can easily prepare and process the data, do anything what you want on the data, and then you can define the models and train the models, and then use the model as inference. The images used by the original projects are grayscale. It means the image colors are combined with only black and white. So we use a dataset called DIV2K for colorful images. Um, we need some modification for the source code if we want to use the colorful version. In most deep learning projects, you need to spend a lot of time to manage your data. So the first step is to load your data from the computer disk to memory, and then apply some preprocessing on the loaded images. Usually, we split the dataset into training and testing sets. We use the image in the training in the training data set to train the models and then use the testing set to evaluate the accuracy for the trained models. Here we show how to use a Python built-in library, GLOB, G O L B, to get all image file paths and then use a um, uh, OpenCV uh, a library for computer vision to load each image. The difference between grayscale and colorful images is the number of channels 
of, Im of each image pixel. A pixel from the colorful image consists of red, green, and blue. So it has three channels. When you load a colorful image by OpenCV, the order to present the pixel data is height, width, and then channel, or HWC. But however, the order for PyTorch is CHW. So we need to use the transpose function to convert the order from HWC to CHW. An important step for data preprocessing is to split, split each training image to many, many small patches. The step is nece necessary because we, <coughs> because we usually use GPUs to accelerate the training process. The memory on a GPU is limited. So if we send the whole image into the GPU, the memory, may, the memory size may not be enough. And errors like out of memory may occur. The image patch techniques help to resolve such practical problems. The function we show is to scan the image from top left to bottom right and extract a small patch for each position. You can change the patch and stress size by your own need. In most cases, a deep learning model may need many data for training. But sometimes, your data set, your data set size may be limited. To enlarge the data set size, we can perform the technique called data augmentation. The function we show uses some most common data augmentation tricks for images. For instance, we can flip or rotate the original image packages to generate new training data. In general, the data augmentation is a random process, so each original image patch is augmented by different tricks rendering. Our demo data set only contains clean images, and the noise images don't exist. To simulate the real scenarios, our last, our last step for data preprocessing is to add noises to the original image patches. Each pixel in the, in the image patch is rendering added by a positive or negative value. The most simple way to generate the random noises is using normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. You can also use another more complicated distribution as you need it. After finishing I finishing the data stuff. Now we show how to define a DNCN model by using PyTorch. A deep learning model in PyTorch is a class of NN DAM module. We can build an NN DAM module by stacking other smaller NN DAM modules. PyTorch provides many basic and common NNDA modules, like convolution layers, CONV, ReLU layers, RELU, and batch normalization layers, BN. We can use these NNDA modules to write a class for DNCN. The DNCN class defines the model architecture during, during class instance initialization and max predictions in the forward method. The last step of our code is the overall training process. The training of DSN is very similar to most deep learning models. First, we create a DSN instance 
there was a previous device defined. Then the instance is read by a data loader to tell the program how to sample data from the data set. The DNCN model instance is also created. We show we should set the number of channels as free because the dataset is a colorful image, not grayscale. And finally, we run the train loop that samples images from the dataset and then update the weights for the model. We repeat and repeat the process again to get a make to get a better and better model. Here we show some results of our train model. Top left is the ground truth, the original train image. Top right is the noise image we want to apply the noise. Bottom left is the output output of traditional method called non-local mean. And the bottom right is the output of our train model. You can see the difference between non-local mean and DNCN our train model. The whiskers of the tiger disappear by using non-local mean, but nicely preserved by DNCN. The tiger image of, peri of previous slide is from the train data set. But in practical, the model should handle images they were never seen before by the model. So, we also show some examples from the test set. You can see DNCN still outperforms the traditional method. The noises are almost almost removed and the image details are preserved. We can also denoise images for Anya Fuger, her similar to the results of Tiger image. The noises are removed by both methods, but DSN keep the details on Anya's faces. Anya's faces. Although DSN is powerful, there are still some limitations. The model performs well for the penguin in the middle of the image, but some complex information on the background are removed. In the past five years. There are many many denoising models are invented and their performance are much better than DSN. But it doesn't mean DSN is not useful because many models are based on the ideas of DSN. Also, we can apply DSN to some real world applications that we are gonna introduce. So the last session today is to share our experience to use the image denoising techniques to all films restorations. In the last year, our team collaborated, collaborated with TFAI, Taiwan Film and Audio Voice Institute. TFAI's main goal is to preserve classical old films in Taiwan. When the old films are converted from physical to digital, there are many tasks we should overcome. One critical, <coughs> one critical task is to remove the defects appear on the videos. There are many different types of the defects, like spots and scratch and they are all needed to be removed frame by frame and by human. The task is tedious and, lab and labor intensive. So we hope to use AI to solve the problem. We apply DNCN to remove the defects. We show an example image pair that the defects are removed or not. Visually, we feel much better when seeing the clean video. So, the defects removal text is necessary during the old film's restoration process. 
This is the main flow of our defects removal project. As you see, DNCN is just a component in the overall process. Many, pe many people think deep learning models are the most important thing, and they don't care anything else. But as you say, we need to consider many different aspects for such real-world scenarios. For instance, we need to an analyze the data to figure out what kinds of the defects in the data set have and their corresponding distributions. In the model training process, we should also care about the behaviors of our data and the models and try to find the training process to make the model prediction better. For example, we found we found our data data is imbalanced. So, how to sample the data from the training for the training process is important. We modify the training. We modify the sampling frequency for each uh, training step, and to match and try to match the bar, the prediction better than normal uh, sampling strategy. After training, some practical issues like hardware limitation should also be taken into account. If the execution time of the model is too slow, people cannot wait. So, AI model is just a component. We show a resource image that the defects are removed by our model. Most defects, like the green and white spots, disappear. It means that our model has a certain ability for image denoising. The model should also prevent from generating artifacts. The artifacts mean, means that you modify some variable in the image. They should not be restored. If there are too many such artifacts, people cannot accept such results. So, as you can see, our model can also prevent from these artifacts. Okay, defects removal is just one task for all fields restoration. There are also many many other important tasks like video stabilization, colorization, super resolution, and frame interpolation that we should overcome. This text will match will make the video quality much better and give it, and this text also give uh, a sign or gives give them time give the video some uh, meaning for the for, for the people. But anyway, image noising is the most fundamental technique and it is possible to apply similar techniques to these texts. So learning something about image noising helps us to know how to solve other harder problems. Okay, so that's about it for today's topic. Thanks again to my team Mask, their co-works and helps. And I also help you guys can learn some best ideas about image denoising from today's talk. Thanks for your watching. Goodbye.